Hi, it's Teardown Time, and yes, you voted for this one, so we're going to tear it down. It's the uh, Hoy Miles. I have been told that is the correct pronunciation. Uh, they make solar inverters, and uh, they very kindly sent in. Uh, this is the runt of the litter. This is a 400 watt um, PV solar inverter. So it takes you a, a single solar panel uh, input anywhere from 16 to 60 volts there. Max input 65 volts. So basically a single uh, panel. And then it'll start up at uh, 22 volts and then it'll give you 240 volts out. And uh, it's a 400 watt jobby. So this is more powerful than the best one uh, that uh, there's ones that I've got on my roof. I've got the 295 watt N phase one. So this one leaves that in the dust because I've got like 370 watt panels or something. I'm only using and 295 watt micro inverter. Anyway, I've done a video on that LinkedIn if you haven't seen it. So we're going to get serious. We're going to get the gloves on because as you saw a sneak, oh God, it's stuck back down. A sneak, oh jeez, hang on. A sneaky peek that we got in the last video. Jeez, yeah, it's really it's stuck itself back down. It is fully potted. Anyway, it's a very uh, nice bit of kit physically. Look at the big, uh, heatsink on it. This, it looks like it is like they've got their own wireless system. I don't believe it's Wi-Fi. I think it's their own custom uh, system. Don't quote me on that though. But uh, yeah, it is actually filled with a re-enterable um, potting gel, I guess. It's not a hard potting compound. So what you can actually do is you can actually get in there with your screwdriver. You know, if you've got a pot in there, you can actually get in there and you can actually tweak it. And when you pull it back out, it well, it's, this one doesn't quite reseal. I've used re-enterable uh, potting uh, gels before that are truly like re-enterable. Anyway, these ones, you can actually get back into them. So we should, in theory, be able to pull this out. So I don't know, if you know the exact type, maybe I should ask them <laughs> what is the exact type. I'll, I will actually ask them before I edit this video and see if they do get back to me very quickly. Um, oh, geez, that's coming off pretty easy isn't it? Anyway, oh no, it's stuck in the inductor. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could shove it back in. I mean, this is going to be thermally conductive stuff too. So of course to, uh, but the whole idea is that it's completely weatherproofed because this is sitting on your roof under your solar panels, even though it's protected. Whoa, there we go. There's a mob or something. You've got to be careful that you don't rip up your parts. Anyway, there's the, uh, Looks like there's the wireless. This is really fun. This is, oh uh, yeah. Yep, I'm enjoying, <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Can't see the look on my face, but oh yeah. This is good stuff. Loving this. But yeah, it's going to be a uh, DC to DC step up because you've got to convert the DC. Ultimately, all this does essentially is convert um, a DC voltage into 240 volts AC. So it's like a, you know, just a regular like, a 12 volt car inverter thing except the voltage does vary and you want maximum power point tracking I assume that this is discharged I have not powered it up and uh, it would have been powered up maybe a long time ago in the factory so maybe I should actually be a bit more careful so don't want to set a bad example but I'm pretty excited here is that a uh, temperature sensor on top of that don't know anyway I am shooting this in 4k resolution for those playing along at home. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you the connections. I don't recognize that. Is that a uh, Hoy Miles um, special? But anyway, you've got your standard uh, MC4 connectors here for your solar. So it just plugs straight into your solar panel. Of course, there's a big mounting point here to mount on your uh, your frame on your, that your solar panels are mounted on. This is fun stuff. Really good. It's uh, thermally compound, a thermal compound. Um, I'm sure it's thermally conductive. We could probably test that. Blech. They do actually have a plug here, which just pops out. So I presume that, uh, you know, either you can extend the mains like that. Um, so you can like uh, plug them all in parallel. Um, yeah, this one's only got the one lead supplied um, because of course it's all on just one big uh, mains AC bus. That's the advantage of these inverters is that it's relatively low, well lower voltage 
than a traditional string inverter like mine at home, for example, with uh, 12 panels is uh, 450, over 450 volts DC. And that's gonna ruin your day. And I've done a video on how, that's one of the benefits of micro inverters is that, uh, yeah, there's no high voltage DC arc over. So there's essentially no uh, you know, issues with uh, fire of these things. Because if you've got a real high, high voltage, high energy DC source, and it arcs over as it does in those um, switch and uh, those uh, isolation switches. They catch on fire, and a lot of homes have actually burnt down because of DC solar DC isolation switches. And even here in Australia, they've had to recall like dozens of different models. My one wasn't caught up in the recall, um, but you've seen I've done a video which I'll link in on the failure. Mine did actually fail. It didn't arc over, thankfully, and burned down my house. <laughs> um, that would have ruined my day. Anyway, even though these uh, still still present, of course, the uh, 240 volt AC risk, um, that's nowhere near as bad as the uh, high voltage DC string. So the other thing is, depending on your country, um, a regular electrician can install these systems as opposed to a you know a certified solar person who's got to be certified for installing high voltage um, DC solar systems they can be installed by your regular electrician and to and still be uh, compliant so no worries so hoy miles have single channel dual channel and four channel jobbies of this as you've seen on my previous video and i'm absolutely sure that the two and four channel units are exactly the same as this except they've got extra channels so we'll just tear down the little runt of the litter here yeah cheap ass gloves well, there you have it. We're in, but uh, I don't see a sufficient number of switching transistors. I only see two down here, um, and that's it. So, yeah, obviously we've got DC in here. Uh, these look like they're probably all in uh, parallel. And then we've got our high voltage DC to DC converter switcher here. So all the switching MOSFETs must be on the bottom side here. I was wondering what these little puppies were at first glance I thought, oh, they're little trimmers, are they? And then I went, no, no, they're not. Little six pin jobbies. And if you look at the silk screen, actually uh, TR, they're actually a little uh, miniature transformer. Is the micro, which will also be on the bottom uh, somewhere, that actually has to measure the, uh, not only the mains in but input to make sure that the voltage is there, but the frequency as well, uh, because this thing has to automate by regulation, it has to, to be sold um, in this country, and I think pretty much any other country, it must uh, switch off if it doesn't detect the main so that it doesn't backfeed. So if there was a grid power fire uh, over here, then you don't want this inverter pumping out voltage uh, to the, um, the poor Oompa Loompas working on the uh, transmission lines and they'll get zapped. So yeah, all uh, inverters, uh, not only micro inverters, but like big string inverters, um, yeah, must disconnect from the grid unless they're specifically designed for off-grid use. And that particular safety feature is known as anti-islanding. So if you hear that uh, mentioned in or in the data sheets, then uh, yeah, you know, that's what it's for. It's a safety disconnect um, because there's, you know, a lot of energy behind these uh, solar panels, uh, especially if you've got a big string uh, system. Well, in this particular case, um, it doesn't matter because you'd have multiple ones. And if this was, if there were power failed on your uh, grid over here, this thing was just pumping out, you know, kilowatts, and then you have, you know, hundreds of houses doing it on the same connection, then, uh, yeah, um, something's going to go bang somewhere or some poor uh, line worker's going to get vaporised. Is that a lead on the bottom that shows through? I don't know. Um, it looks like it. Anyway, there's a heat sink, so most likely we've got uh, surface mount switching transistors under on the bottom side of this board uh, pressed against uh, the bottom of the case, and that's what they're using as the heat sink. All right, so let's check these caps here and uh, see if they're in parallel. I can see that they're, I can see at least one pin is connected in parallel. So that's the positive. So, yep. All the positives and all the negatives. Let's have a squiz. Yep. Now is the negative actually connected through to solar negative? It is indeed. There's a couple of caps under there. Um, directly across, actually. They've got a single cap across the input there. And, of course, I've done videos on where those sort of caps um, have caught a light. You know, if you get a micro crack in there and they fail short, well, there's a lot of energy in that solar panel. It's going to release the magic smoke in that 
uh, cap, so I have to link in that video. Problem here is, I don't know how far that compound goes under though. I can actually move, wiggle, 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 yeah, the board from side to side. So it's loosey-goosey, but ooh, um, <laughs> that feels like it's going to crack. Wow, no, it's just, it's bending like here. Well, that's interesting. It looks like these two caps here are sit in a cutout in the PCB, whereas these two caps over here don't. They're a shy brand, 105 degree jobbies. Um, yeah, they're all right. You know, they're not a Panasonic, but they are. But they are a uh, reputable name in China, at least. Oh no, there you go. They're, they've got cutouts as well, but yeah, the board just doesn't extend out like that so that's interesting anyway they're doing that for the uh, height profile of course these caps are uh, the diameter of these is uh, too large to put them flat uh, flush on the uh, PCB and then the top lid on here so they have to put the cut out in there I got it I got it um, <laughs> yeah it's completely ah uh, power device is stuck right down to the bottom nope it's just all thermal <laughs> it's, it's turtles all the way down See the imprint of the uh, processor down there? Look, got some uh, either power transistors, power diodes, whatnot. Um, yeah, you can see the uh, pins, of course, the uh, through-hole stuff. As I said, this is all thermally conductive. We might uh, run a test on that. That's the whole idea. And insulative, of course. Otherwise, you're going to come a guts a real quick. And, of course, yeah, here's all the extra power transistors I was expecting. A whole bunch there. There you go. Anyway, there's our main processor. I'll take uh, a high-res photo of this and the other side, and then we can go over to the computer and uh, have a uh, squiz. All right, so let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. I've got the uh, top of the PCB like this, and I've got the bottom, which I have uh, flipped around. So all the electrons are going to... Uh, uh, um, it go on one side, it's going to be very confusing. So the DC input down here is going to line up with the DC input down here. No wackers. So we have our negative and our positive DC input here. And then we go through an inductor like this. We've got little common mode, bleh, common mode joke. That's pretty how you're doing, isn't it? And we've got our JTAGs over here. Now, what processor do we have? Well, you can't see it here um, because all, there's gunk on all the chips. So I had to like uh, ungunk them. It's actually a TMS320 DSP, old school. Um, the winner, that's very surprising for a, uh, like a, a Chinese um, product like this. So yeah, <laughs> and they've got some old school designer there. Yeah, TMS320, no workers. So that's really interesting. Now, as I mentioned, uh, the input uh, caps down here, they're directly across there. So if that goes uh, short circuit, um, yeah, the magic smoke's uh, going to escape it, but these things aren't sub subjected to vibration and, you know, flex stress and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, it's fine. And they've got the same thing here as well. They've got a cap. There's another one uh, there, which is not uh, fitted. Now, there's a current sense resistor here. So they've got a uh, low side, because this is a negative input here. They've got a low side current sense resistor. And you can see the differential pair going off to obviously a low side current sense uh, amplifier here and that's going into our uh, TMS320. And obviously you can see here that all of the caps are in parallel as we measured. So, yep, and we can go to the top side here and you'll get uh, the same thing. So this is the positive, uh, this is not a ground plane, this is the positive plane. So you can see all of those are connected in parallel. So all these caps, 42700 uh, microfarad and the 63 volt is the dead uh, giveaway. Um, they're the input caps. Presumably they need the input, you know, it's a DC source, right? But presumably they need those input caps um, because if sun comes over, fluctuations, clouds, shadows, you know, bird flies over or whatever, then you don't want uh, your processor actually, you know, getting starved of voltage and being dropped out. So it looks like that. Yeah, they need. That's where they needed all of their bulk storage is actually on the um, input. But interestingly, you can see here there is no input fusing. It is directly across those caps. So um, 
yeah, uh, you know, which is normally not a problem because the supplied MC4 connectors, um, they're polarized, right? So you can't hook them up the wrong way, but you're not counting for the human factor. You know, uh, Bruce is installing on the job and he goes, ah, yeah, no worries, I just down a couple of beers and, and then I'll rewire this panel here and uh, she'll be right, no worries. And yeah, <laughs> you come a gutsa. So yeah, if you uh, apply the um, panels backwards, um, that's gonna go bangski. And as I mentioned before, we've got little uh, transformers here, which, um, it, but interestingly, the three pins here look to be tied to the positive. So, yeah, okay. Um, I'm not sure, maybe the other, yeah, I'm not sure how that's working, but um, TR is transformer, so, I don't know. I was going to say that's maybe for uh, galvanically isolating the uh, negative input here which is here, which is all these caps. So it's actually marked there. Um, so, and it looks like the ground for the processor, that's all separate. You can see that here. So that looks to be galvanically, don't know why you'd need to, but maybe is that galvanically isolated from the uh, input here? Anyway, yep, uh, that little port on the back was LEDs. There's, there's two little LEDs in there, which shine out the back. I don't know who's ever going to see it, I guess, during commissioning. Um, and that's about it. It's the only time you'll ever um, see these things. We're getting ahead of ourselves, but this is the voltage. These two resistors here, um, they use big ass axial ones like this for the voltage uh, standoff. And uh, yeah, this is measuring the uh, voltage on the AC mains output. So they need to know that. So they need to measure the uh, DC input and they need to measure the AC output. So maybe is that come in from there I'm not sure or is that a uh, gate drive for the switching trannies under the bottom here I don't know I'm not really gonna like comprehensively reverse engineer this aha uh -huh. no the bottom side here you can see that there's our two axial resistors there and we've got that going over to here so obviously this or at least this is the uh, measurement part of measuring the mains um, output voltage. So that will be detecting the mains voltage and the mains frequency. And if they aren't uh, in compliance, um, then if they're not there, if you get uh, you know a grid fault, then that's part of the anti-island in uh, protection. And that's all controlled by the micro over here. All right, I've jumped ahead a bit and done a little bit of a uh, reverse engineering here so we can figure out what's going on here. Now, um, these are the MOSFET uh, switching transistors. We can have a look at these here. These are AON uh, 6250 Alpha Omega Jobbies, 150 volt N channel uh, MOSFET. Pretty grunty little things. And it looks like that they have uh, two of those um, in parallel on each side. Now, they're all identical. There's no uh, P channel or N channel thing. Why? Because they're, it looks like that they're using an interleaved flyback here. So they've got two different transformers. You can see here, they've got, well, two identical transformers like this. So they're actually interleaving, they're switching between this transformer and this transformer here. And then there's a, these MOSFETs, they're in parallel, and they're just uh, switching that down to ground here, as you can see. So this is the positive input, which is actually here, but you know, it's a bit hard to draw these things in situ. But uh, yeah, there's the uh, primary side uh, transformer coil there, and there's the secondary side on those pins there. So uh, the reason that they're using interleaved flyback here is probably, no. well, A, when you interleave it with two transformers like this, you've instantly doubled your frequency for starters, so that makes it uh, more efficient, and then you reduce your output ripple current uh, per given uh, output capacitance. As you can see on the top here that they haven't actually got much output capacitance, it's just these two caps here, basically. So I forgot to draw these lines coming out here, but this is basically um, a, a boost DC to DC converter and interleaved flyback. So you've got your, you know, your 60 odd volts maximum coming from your uh, solar panel input here. It's smoothed by these caps here, which uh, holds it up just in case of any uh, brownouts or, uh, you know, shading. And then obviously this chip here, which I couldn't get details on, I do actually have a number on that, but it's obviously like a dual MOSFET 
driver. That's just by its sheer placement there. And then the control lines run off uh, to your micro over here. So yeah, they're using two separate sides there to give an interleaved uh, feedback. And then obviously, look, there's feedback coming here um, because the micro has to know the DSP, right, is controlling all of this actively. And if you have a look at the uh, top side here, there's even more, right? There's another isolation transformer here. There's some more opto coupley things here, right? So that micro on the bottom is like really controlling the it's you know it's it's measuring the outputs and it's optimizing everything and then it's doing maximum power point uh tracking as well for the uh solar panels right it's doing the whole kit and the caboodle so anyway 60 volts here and then you get a couple of hundred volts dc out of this and you can see that that's just uh diode out like that they're just diode ord like that and there's some as i said there's a little bit of capacitance there so low voltage dc rail high voltage dc rail like this and then they've just looks like they've just got a standard like h bridge uh switch in here there's uh two mosfets here and there's two mosfets on the other side here and there's miscellaneous stuff and i won't get you know won't go into huge details it's just a standard looks like a standard h bridge uh driver there and then you've got your main isolation um transformer here which steps the high voltage dc up to AC here so you just switch that and bingo they've got a uh, relay here which is actually a pretty good one it's a uh, you know Tyco there's no like no name Chinese stuff in here and then we've got a big ass mov uh, on the high voltage uh, DC side here just in case and um, yeah this the relay is a double pole uh, double throw jobby so this entirely disconnects it um, from the uh, grid here so you've got not only isolation and they of course uh, claim this in the data sheet it's completely uh, galvanically uh, isolated and um, yeah it, it switches off um, you know part of the anti-island in protection all that uh, sort of jazz it physically um, disconnects from the grid so there's absolutely no chance of even if the switching was still happening on this side uh, that relay is disconnected over there so there will be an isolated uh, relay drive going back to the main processor on here in fact I haven't looked for that but uh that'd be it here there you go there's your relay drive <laughs> so that's going over here yep so that that's your relay drive and that eventually must how somehow get back isolated to uh the micro over here which is controlling that then we've just got an output uh fuse here like this we've got some output uh capacitance i didn't draw that in but there's two extra uh caps here going down to uh mains like uh, chassis mains earth down here so uh, just for uh emi uh purposes then we've just got some extra uh filter in here common mode uh choke we've got another uh cap on this side here we've got a uh, bleeder resistor here so it discharges that um you know slowly so it's uh fairly safe interestingly there is another cap missing here i don't know was that for a higher power model or something got no idea anyway um then we've got our uh, dual mobs here i've drawn a single mob but i think they might be uh in series haven't checked the exact uh connection there but yeah so we've got big ass mob uh protection straight across uh the mains if that wasn't enough then we've got a gdt here here it is uh 600 um 600 volt jobby and uh yeah that's a gdt that's a gas discharge tube so spark gap uh protection and then we've got some another couple of caps there going down to uh one, once again uh uh, mains earth down here you can see the green wire down there and they've got some bonus mob protection which i haven't drawn in here in fact i didn't look at that part i forgot to look at that look at that it's like um it's what anyway that's interesting but yeah they've got mob uh, protection down the ground so it's very well protected so there it is um that you know there's not a huge amount in this so if this one can do 400 va i'm not sure what um n phase are doing for example seems to be a quite a, i was contacted by an yet another um micro <laughs> inverter <laughs> manufacturer um and they wanted me to like review their micro inverters so i you know let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do another one to compare to this one i don't know um <laughs> you know seen one seen them all i think but there you go yeah just a h bridge uh, driver galvanic isolation really switch in we've got output uh, filtering and that generates the mains and of course it's reading back uh via these so for me the major surprise is uh the tms 320 uh processor here uh they've got big uh, capacitance on the input here which is not uh fuse or uh, diode protected or anything <laughs> for anything going wrong yeah but i don't know if um interleave uh flyback 
um, is typical in micro inverters like this. I don't know. If you know more, leave it in the comments down below. This is the first micro inverter I've torn down. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so in terms of um, isolation, they've got an isolation uh, slot under here like this. Um, I don't know why they didn't extend the isolation slot under here. I would have like just as a matter of course although there's adequate um you know creepage distance there but the problem with this is that if you get any uh moisture trapped you know due to the thermal you know because these are uh, subjected to thermal extremes on your roof so if you get any uh, moisture ingress or moisture build up inside the thing then you could actually get a uh you know leakage creepage path across here but eh, i don't know you know i i think that clearance looks pretty decent so anyway, there you go. That's inside a uh, Hoy Miles uh, 400 VA, 400 watt micro inverter. I hope you found that interesting. I certainly uh, did. I don't know if I'd be able to power this up now. There was a bit, a lot of bending on that board, so eh, I don't know if this is still operational. That stuff sticks really well. <laughs> that potting compound, but uh, yeah, that's interesting to tear down these things absolutely fascinating this is what uh goes into a i assume other micro inverters are uh typical maybe i should take up that other company on the offer and offer to do a uh tear down on there um i think 400 i uh, know their ones go up to 500 as do the um hoy miles ones i think they do a 500 watt model but this is the uh 400 one so i don't know slightly bigger beefier output capacitance beefier transformers you know beefier switching perhaps uh, and don't forget to subscribe you know what to do there's a subscribe button down there and you click the notification bell thing and then uh, bob's your uncle you'll get notified of all my new videos people go oh i didn't see your new video and i you know they comment on one oh yeah i've already done a video on that like a couple of weeks ago and it's like oh, missing all the notification goodness anyway i <laughs> hope you enjoyed that video if you did please give it a big thumbs up and as always discuss down below catch you next time Thank <laughs> you.